Let's look here. 32,000. Wow, I'm amazed. This is 32,000 ISO. Everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm coming to you today from the top of the Chugach Mountains. And what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the low light performance and the high ISO performance of the Canon R7. In a previous video, I had gone over the comparisons to the R7 and the R5. This is the R5. I'm filming with the R7 right now because of the 30 minute time limit. Hopefully we'll get rid of that soon on this R5. Uh, but what I did was I, we knew what the noise level and what we could do with DxO or Topaz. I use DxO and I'll explain why I use DxO over Topaz now for my initial part here in a second. But we knew what I could do with this. I knew what ISOs I could push this thing of, what the noise levels looked like at those ISOs. So in that last video, what I, since I didn't have DxO at the time, is I was comparing the two to say how close are the noise levels. And it looked like to me about one stop off, one stop better with the R5 versus the R7, which is really good for a crop sensor camera. Got a few bugs buzzing around here once in a while. As long as they're not mosquitoes, I'm good. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. The... Now that we have DxO, now I can look at these files in the R7. I don't have to compare them to the R5 anymore because all we're trying to do is do a baseline with the R5 versus the R7. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the DxO processing to the R7 files to see what that true noise level is. I could look at DPP, which is fine, but that really doesn't help me because I want to see what DxO does with it, which is pretty close to the DPP, what it looks like there, because I don't like editing with the DPP. It's too slow, too cumbersome. I like editing in Lightroom, but I need to get my files in a good state before they go to Lightroom. All right, guys, let's look at these images real quick. So I'm going to look for what we're going to start at. We're going to start at 5,000 ISO. Rather, why am I starting at 5,000? We know that at 3,200 ISO, we're golden, around 4,000 too. So we're going to jump in the 4,000, 5,000 range uh, because everybody said 3,200, I'm great. So let's look at 5K. So let's look at the first image. Uh, again, we're processor DxO, pure raw. I know one five hundred second f7.1 using this lens. 500 millimeters at 5,000 ISO. Let's see what we got. Looks really good to me. Look here. There's even the flies and bugs on her nose. Look at all the little whiskers down here. They're nice and clear. Her eye, no noise. Bugs. Fence. Looks really clean. This looks great to me. I mean, these aren't great shots. I just went out and found this moose and trying to get shots over. So let's move on and find another image. Here's another 5,000 ISO image. Again, we can see the bugs. The eye is pretty good. All the detail. This ear is in focus. That one's out of focus. Um, look at all the hair. Looks great. I don't see any noise in the darks. Uh, that's where you look for in this. You're looking in the darks. That's really, really going to see the noise. So in the darks, what you'll see, especially like this area, this area here, you will see color fringing. We don't see any. We don't see any dots either. Looks great. Let's move on. We're looking for more 5,000 ISO images. Okay, that's getting up too high, so let's go back. Let's look at this little guy. He's at 6,400 ISO, so we bumped up a little bit. Let's look at 6,400 ISO. Look at all the little eyelashes, looks good. I see the darks. I don't see any color fringing in here whatsoever. Let's look back here in this dark. All right, I see extremely very little noise in here. Looks great. Uh, great detail. Um, I see feather, or sorry, feather, fur. Fur detail looks good. Let's move on. Uh, same shot, 6400 ISO. Looks good. I don't see any color fringing. I see very, very little noise in here. We're looking good. So here's the loon. Remember our fun little loon? This goofy little booger. I mean, he did the same thing, come up and splash me. So this is 5,000 ISO. I'm shooting at a one four thousandth of a second. The light was a little better. Not great. It was still like this. It's completely cloud covered, but it was the middle of the day. And this is what we got. This is 5,000 ISO. Look at that. Pure great detail in the eye. The beak's nice and sharp. Look at all this feather detail. Loons are hard to get because these feathers get tight. Uh, look at the water on the back. Remember, we're zoomed in 100% here. And that all looks good. Great feather detail. Like I said, we're at 1 5,000th of a second, or 1 5, one four thousand of a second, 5,000 ISO. 
This one is 6400 ISO. It's a lot darker. But the detail, look at all the detail on the feather. Let's look at the noise. Noise is negligible out here. Looks great. Underexposed. So right off the bat, I can tell you that at 6400 and below, I'm completely com comfortable. I use my DxO software just like I did the R5. I don't process any files off this R5 without using DxO because they look like crap. Use the DxO, gets rid of that noise, gets the colors back where it's supposed to be, and I'm, I'm right in my perfect starting point. So let's move on up to 8000 ISO. So in the comments real quick, go ahead and put down would you use 8,000 ISO with any crop sensor camera? Would you use 10,000? We're going to hit 10,000 next after this. Would you use 8,000, 10,000 ISO with your crop sensor cameras? Would you even use it with the R5? Leave me those comments down in the comment section. So let's look at 8,000 ISO. Same little calf out of there. I'm shooting one eight hundred per second at 8,000 ISO. You see my histogram up here? Pretty much perfect, right? Right in the middle. So let's look here. Eyelashes look great. The darks, no noise in the darks. 8,000 ISO, remember that. Blacks look good. The fur, I keep saying feather detail. The fur detail looks good. Let's look up in here. I'm seeing a touch of noise, but very neg negligible. Really looks good up in here. Um, remember, DxO is not like Topaz. It's not going to go try to wipe out that noise. It doesn't, you don't have a noise slider. It's using very minimal noise reduction. Very small amount. Very, very small amount just like DPP does. Uh, this looks great. Uh, 8,000 ISO, guys. Remember that, 8,000. Let's move on. Same little guy, 8,000 ISO. We'll look here, good eye detail. Um, and you know, I'm shoot they're shooting through it. There's a piece of grass right here, shooting through it. It's pretty good uh, to be able to get that much detail back. Uh, ears look good, look at all the fur. Fur looks good everywhere I can see the fur. Let's move on. Same guy again, we're looking some more. Don't see anything. These darks, very little noise in here. Really good. We're still at 8,000. Let's go over to our favorite little loon. Here he is at 8,000 ISO. This guy's just a nut job. So and that's actually me right there. Right, that little shadow right there is me. There's the sun, refraction. The beak looks good. This is a little underexposed. But, oh, wow, look at the feather detail. We're, again, we're at 8,000 ISO. Pretty nice. Water detail looks good. Feather detail, look at that. Water, feathers. I can see all that feather detail. Let's look out here in this dark corner here. Wow, not a whole lot of noise, not enough to really matter. Again, noise is not bad, okay? Just, just, just get out of that. No, we don't want this completely smooth. A little bit of noise. I introduced noise in some of my images. So a little bit of noise, A okay. Moving on, moving on. Let's look at the next image. So that was this one here. Let's look at the, I always jump to the eye first. We all do, come on. Look at that, there we go. I know, that may not be me, but, but you can see reflection in there, detail in the eye. Uh, looks good in here. You can start to see a little bit of the noise in here, but it, you have to, again, we're zooming in. You know, that's not what we do when you print a picture. And so uh, that all looks good. Again, feather detail. We saw it in the last picture, it looks great. A little better exposure here. Um, why? Oh, you know why? The bird turned a little bit. He was over here in the shadows and he got a little more out of those shadows because there's some planes over here. He's in the shadow. That's what this red and stuff is. So we got to hear a little better exposure. Let's see what we got now. Ooh, look at that. 8,000 ISO. Wow. Wow. Look at that. You got the sun. You got the reflection, the water, the sun, whatever's behind me here in his eye. You can see that. Uh, the beak looks good. I don't see any noise in the beak. Look here, pretty good feather detail here. Once again, good feather detail. We're falling off here because the angle of the bird's a little different, so we're losing this, but we got the eye sharp. Looks good. Next one, almost the same exact image, same thing. Great eye, good feather detail. All the way down here, the fallout because of the focal plane. Looks great, 8,000 ISO. So now I'm adjusting my thought process, 8,000 ISO. Yeah, I don't have a problem using it. I'm going to shoot that eye with the R7. I'm going to do it. I'll get it back in DxO. All right, let's move on ahead. One more thing. So now we should be looking at 10,000 ISO images. So would you use 10,000 ISO with your R7 or a crop sensor or even your uh, R5? I know I will shoot 10,000 and 
not worry, but I'm thinking I'm getting a little high with the R5. I've shot some stuff at 25,600 and was able to recover it and did some work with it. But we're going to see as we go through how well this does. So we're at 10,000 ISO. This was a squirrel. Um, this is early morning. There's it's just like this. There's no light out here today, guys. This is just completely... Look, actually, I'm in the clouds right now. They are right behind me. I could see this mountain a while ago, and now the clouds have moved up behind me. Kind of spooked me for a second there. Same thing here. And this the squirrel is under a tree canopy, so there's no light penetrating. And I actually like this shot. This is a really cool shot. And I just whipped around with this 100-500 with that R7 and took the picture. So we're at 10,000 ISO. Remember that. Let's look at the eyeball. Wow. Wow. Um, I'm impressed here, guys. Look at that. I, I'm still a little underexposed. All I would do on this image is I'd come in here and I'd probably paint this squirrel a little bit to bring him up, bring, maybe a quarter stop, maybe. Get a little more light on him. And I'd leave this... Ooh, where am I going? I'd leave this background where it was. Wow, that looks good. Look at that. That eye looks great. All the detail. Look at the noise in here. Very minimal noise. I love the bouquet back here. Uh, same shot, just different head. He just moved hair on us. Um, nothing different here. Looks exactly the same. 10,000, same thing. One, one six fortieth of a second. So you can tell how dark that is. One six fortieth, 7.1 aperture, 10,000 ISO. Uh, here he is fixing to jump down. I only saw him for a brief second. Let's look at his tail. Look at all the... See? You can see a little bit because one, the focus is falling out. Had a little bit at 10,000 ISO. The tip of the tail is not as sharp, but you see right here it's sharp where it was in focus because of the focal plane because um, it was looking here at this eye. That looks great. The detail in the wood, look at that. 10,000 ISO, guys. Let's move on. So he's, okay. This is a fox. He was uh, a red fox male. Um, he's, in back, he's in the backyard of this house right next to the, button up to some woods. I still think it's a cool picture because uh, I like this, the way this little, this little thing looks. Let's find him where he's in. Here he is. So, um, I'm at 1 500 a second, 451 millimeters not zoomed all the way out, 10,000 ISO. Remember that, guys. Male fox. Let's zoom in. Ah, I'm out of focus. Motion blur, 500 of a second. There we go. That's better. Motion blur, motion blur, motion blur. Nothing wrong with the lens, nothing wrong with the camera, not wrong with the ISO. Me. I screwed up, right? Because I wanted to shoot faster. But I'm already at 10,000 ISO. Faster would have been 16 to 20,000. Look here. We are in... Focus right on that head. Looks great. Let's look at the darks. Man, I don't even see the noise. That's interesting. It's there. Uh, look at that. The grass looks great. Fox looks great. Look at the detail here. 10,000. You can see a piece of stray something here in his hair and dirt. Again, I just paint his face a little bit. Make his face a little brighter and use this image. I like it. It's really nice. Let's move on. Same dude. Let's see if he's in focus. No, he's out of focus. Just one was in. That's a problem you shoot one five hundredth of the day. If you don't catch him when you stop for a second, oh, beautiful face. I love my foxes. Little dirt on him. Um, again, I just bright. He's a little underexposed, but I like to underexpose a little bit. See how it's clipping here, the blacks here. That's why I don't see noise over here because the blacks are just gone. It's cool. I like low key images. Uh, that's what this one would be. I'd probably low key this a little bit more, bring his face up a little bit more. As long as this isn't clipped here, I can. I can probably bring this up a little bit. Uh, looks great. Because um, I'm looking for noise. I'm <laughs> looking for keepers. i got to settle down. Uh, again, he's in focus in the next shot. Still 10,000 ISO. What I'd expect to see at 10,000 ISO is his face just be mush. All the noise and pixelization, it's not there. DxO does a great job. So does DPP uh, of getting these files to the true ISO they're supposed to be for that camera. Moving on, same shot. All right, so we are at 10,000 on those moose we saw a while ago. Um, not much you can see at this distance when I'm zoomed in. Let's go find. Okay, here's the calf at 10,000. Uh, look at that, 10,000 ISO. Sorry, bugs. Um, yeah, look at that. I don't see any color fringe or anything in here. The detail looks pretty good for 10,000. Let's see if we can find Mama. There's Mama. Eye detail, detail looks good. Flowers look good. There's the rain we're talking about. I don't see a whole lot of noise. I know it's here. It just it just doesn't jump out at you. I can see it in there, but uh, it's negligible, right? Look at the 
veins in her ears you can still see at 10,000 ISO. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right, let's move on. Let's get to our loon. Our loon, our favorite loon again. Ah, 10,000 ISO, guys. Look at this. Eyes sharp. That's good. Look, feather detail again at 10,000 ISO. Raindrops, water drops on his back look good. Let's look at whatever dark we can find. Look down here. Noise is negligible. Let's move on. Let's look for one. I guess this is a good enough light. Uh, yeah, detail in the eye is good. Uh, underexposed, but yeah, you can still see it. Just, you know, I'm underexposed where I screwed up. Look at the feather detail. Um, it's not mushed out by the noise. 10,000 ISO, guys. No, we're at 12,800 right now. So let's look at this. It's over, this one's overexposed. Um, can you mind? There we go. So I, I, I touched over where I, you know, to the right. A lot of people say expose to the right. I, I don't. I expose middle or to the left. Uh, sometimes I expose to the right. Depends on what I'm trying to do. Uh, look here. We're at 12,800 ISO. If I'm really picking, I can see a touch of noise in here, but not enough to notice in that dark. Uh, none in here. The detail in the nose. Look at the fuzz from the fireweed. Um, let's look over here. Let's see a little bit of noise in the back here, which I expect to see in the in the bouquet. Uh, let's look at Mama Moose here. Wow, twelve thousand eight hundred ISO. Um, again, I'm shooting through fog and rain. Right here's the rain. Here's the fog. There's this fog in this stuff. Um, I can see flies. I can see detail. I'd use this image. You know, if it's framed better and the subject's better, I don't see it. I would not reject this due to noise, is what I'm saying. I reject it due to comp and not being interesting. But other than that, I wouldn't. Let's move. Let's look at her again. Yeah, it's out of focus. So doesn't matter. Still out of focus. Uh, our loon, that's a little far away. <clears throat> Looks fine. I can see feather detail. When you get these loons and they're that far away, they their feathers are so tight. They're just to me. They're, I just they do this look. Bleh. You know, I, I'm not real big on them. I want them unless it's a silhouette. I, I don't want that far away picture. Even this one's too far away for me, in my opinion. I could crop in and get it bigger, but um, they're just not as interesting to me. Because again, once they're that far away, you can't see all the detail in the feathers. Sixteen thousand. I can see a touch of noise right here in the top in this light part. I see it a little bit in the beak, but not much. I see a little bit in here that's messed with this little bit. Feather detail looks good. The water. Look at the darks. Look good. Usable image. 16,000. Same thing, 16,000 again. Looks a little better in there from the noise this time. 16,000 here. Let's look at this. Feather detail looks great. The head detail looks pretty good. Water detail, feathers look pretty good. Let's go to the next one. Water. Yeah, it looks great, guys. Look at that. Come in here and brighten this eye up a little bit. That's all I'd do to this image. You know, of course, a few small, small adjustments, but, you know, brighten that eye up. Again, not an image I would use. I'm just shooting, trying to look at the ISO. I like it. I like the beak in the water. I think it's cute. Uh, but yeah, it looks good. 16,000 ISO. I, I, I could still use this image. I don't see any problem with this image. Let's go up here. Still 16,000. Now here's where we're seeing a little bit of, uh, where this little line here looks, a lot of even images of good ISO look goofy here when you get these kind of harsher lines. I don't see any chromatic uh, aberration right there. It's, I think it's just the way the, the contrast is between the two. There's that soreness neck again. I don't know what that is, but look, the feather detail looks great. The darks, they look fine. I mean, at 16,000 ISO, let me find a 20,000 one. Oh, no, I gotta look at the loon again. Look at the water dropping off his chin, the water in his eye. Looks great. Let's move on. 16, 16, I like that head pose. Twenty thousand. Here's a twenty thousand ISO. Twenty thousand ISO. Let's look here. Oh wow, it looks good. I can see again the top part of that. I can see a touch of noise in there. I can see in this grays, which don't matter when you get noise in the grays. It's not a big deal, especially there's not any feather detail in there anyway. You can see a touch. You have to really look. You can see it in there in the beak a touch. Let's look at the feather detail. 
overexposed right here. <clears throat> it's not clipping, but it's close. Uh, good, 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 good. Looks looks great. Uh, I'm looking down here in the darks, man. That noise is negligible in that there. Twenty thousand. Remember, twenty thousand ISO. Uh, eyes out of focus. Eyes in focus. Interesting. Out. In. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it could have grabbed the body or something. Um, no telling what happened there. Let's look. Uh, I don't see as much noise here at 20,000 in that top part of the eye. The beak looks good. Um, it's always mushy right in here on these loons' face anyway, but, you know, at 20,000, we're getting a little, it's, it's mushier. Um, looks good. I think a lot of it's the exposure. Even though it says, hey, I'm just a little to the left, I don't like the exposure on it. It's not bad, but... Um, 20, 25, 25,600 ISO. As these ISOs go up, I get really scared what it's going to look like. Um, oh, okay. Well, I'm not scared anymore. I, you can see the noise in the eye. I mean, but you got to really, we're pixel peeping, right? You can't see it here, but you can see it there if you're really looking. Uh, that is me there, that dot in the middle. I can tell that's the dock in me that I'm sitting on. A little bit of noise there. Feather detail looks as usual, looks... Pretty good. The exposure is up high. Um, a little bit of that noise is causing that to, and plus the higher exposures, making that wash a little bit. Twenty-five thousand ISO. I should, I'd expect this whole photo be mush, not just you know back in here where it's the two combined, the exposure and that. If I underexposed, that would look a little better, because um, up in here you don't see it as much because the way the shadows are falling. Let's go on, same thing, 25,600. I mean, these are usable images, 25,600. Um, comp's not, you know, the lens, I'm, I'm, I'm picky on my loon pictures. I, there's only certain poses I like them in. Um, been shooting them on the side here, they're okay. They're, uh, this, it's just not as interesting. Um, good detail here, a little bit of noise in the eye, not anything you couldn't fix in post. Uh, again, I think it's overexposed for me, but you could bring it back down. It's, it's better to be overexposed than underexposed if you have to adjust your exposure. Because going backwards now, we're going from 20, 30. Oh, God. I, sorry, guys. We were at 25,000. This image we're just looking at was 32,000 ISO. This is the high one. So I was sitting here thinking I'm still at 25,000, not looking at this. This is 25, I see, sorry, 32,000 ISO, this image. I was just griping about it a little bit. Like this one wasn't as good. Well, it's 32,000 ISO. That's why it's washing more. There is noise in here. You can see it now, but it's, it's you know, it's not horrible. Look at that. That, that right there I could use. Um, the same thing, 32,000. Um, yeah, I can see noise now in here that I couldn't see before. Can't see it here because the way the light, it kind of hides it. Don't see as much here. I can see it out here more. But God, we're at, the, we're at the top of the... Oh, speaking of tough, it just got real foggy all around me. <laughs> I, I'm in the cloud right now, guys. If I'm hard to see me in the video, that's why. When you go to the top of the mountain to do this, this is what happens. And the bugs are horrible. All right, back to this guy. 32,000. Starting to see a little bit of noise, but I'm at the max of it, right? Again, I see noise in the feathers. I see noise in here. I see noise out here, but it's not that it's not washing the image out that bad. It's washing I, these guys when they look straight at you. The beak looks goofy. Let's look here, thirty-two. Wow, I'm amazed. This is thirty-two thousand ISO, and it's not a total garbage image. It, it, it's when you're at, at you know at the full original size. Start zooming in, yeah, you see some noise, but it's not, it didn't kill the image. So what's my end up wrap up and final thoughts on the ISO low light performance of the Canon R7? It's really good. Um, I was really surprised. I knew the ISO seemed like it was pretty comparable to the R5 when I did the just straight raw in the Lightroom looking at it. And as I've been going through doing some other stuff, I bring them into DPP to do some reviews lately with you guys. And I was seeing the images look really good at, at whatever ISO is shooting. And I was trying to shoot anything under 
five thousand. I five thousand was hard, as far as I was pushing it because I was really worried. Can I get higher than that? I knew I could with the R five, and I should have known when these were, seemed like at that time they're a stop off, and I still think they're about a stop to stop and a half off from the R seven versus the R five, with the R five being a touch better. But I now know that I can shoot up to 10,000 ISO and not worry about it. I, I, just same as this. With the R5, when I hit 10,000, you know, if I'm going higher than 10,000, I'm starting to think about what do I need to do with my aperture and my shutter speed. Uh, can I drop them? Can I, you know, can I? Uh, I, I try to shoot most things over 800 to 1,000 because it depends on what, with animals because the eye movement, any sudden movement they make, Birds, I, I want to shoot 1,600 plus. Uh, foxes and squirrels, I want to shoot at 1,000 plus. Uh, just because they just don't know when they're going to jump or move. Uh, it's pretty crazy. The pikas and ground squirrels, I shoot a lot lower. And some other things like sheep, I shoot a lot lower. But I don't know when they're going to do a jump. I have a beautiful shot of a ram jumping that's in that very first video. He jumped. Uh, I screwed up the shot. You know, I had, had the settings completely wrong. And, uh, but not, I mean, but if you look at the squirrel picture, this is 10,000 ISO, 640, and it was dark. It was cloudy, canopy covered. Where I was shooting, I could, I could just barely see them with the naked eye. It was that dark. But when I got in here and raised this 10,000 ISO, I mean, every bit of details here. The noise is, is, is negligible, almost gone after DXO. The eye is beautiful. I could, I could clean this up, I'd brighten him up just a touch, leave this all dark like it is. Beautiful image. Um, I like this one. I actually, I like the one where he's looking over there a little bit more with the tail in the air, but those two shots there, I like. Um, I, I, I'm impressed with it. Now, when I'm going out and shooting, even though I'm saying this, I, I can get up 10,000, 16,000, and I think I could use the images, just like I can with this. But if I'm out there shooting and I start seeing 10,000, I'm thinking about other stuff to get that shutter, because I want that ISO as low as I can get it so I can recover things. And But I'm not seeing as much as the color fringing I thought I saw originally. Of course, you're going to get higher the ISO, you're going to start to see it in a lot of these dark, especially brown moose and stuff like that. You're going to see color fringing. I see it on the R5 too. Guys, it's great. Uh, I'm really impressed. And it's a $1,500 camera. Keep that in mind, $1,500 camera. Um, with the Canon though, we have to use that DXO, we gotta to use Topaz. There's just no way around it on CR3 files. Just That's just a given. So um, if you think differently, let me know. So guys, that's it, I'm out. I will see you guys in the next episode. It'll probably be this lens review. And I think I'll go ahead and do the video settings review also, or how to, how to use the setup. And then I'll probably, uh, I need to do the full setting on the camera. And then I've got the trip, I'm gonna go see the bears here in, uh, and the second week of August and through there. So I will see you guys later.